right now, the Toronto Raptors have 19 players on contract heading to training camp. They have two extra roster spots remaining if they choose to use them. But right now, they have 19 players on the books on contract. I'm going to rank every single one of them, see which ones are the best, see which ones are the worst. The Amateur Hour Production Network is dedicated to Toronto Raptors content. We do videos and we also do live streams, which go long on the main channel. So to make it easier for you guys to watch and to digest, we have the Amateur Hour Clips channel. We're going to take the best highlights and segments from those live streams on Amateur Hour Sports and put them right here for you to enjoy. So if you like what you see along the way, make sure you do hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel as well with so much consistent content coming out as well as post-game shows during the season you're not going to want to miss out. And this includes everyone, like the, the two-way guys, Exhibit 10 guys. This is the people who are on contract heading into training camp. So we have five different tiers to choose from. And it just deleted the tiers that I had set up for the stream. Awesome. And deleted the files. Okay, well... I, I previewed it so well, I set it up so well, and now, one sec, let me put it back together. Thankfully, I didn't delete any of these files. <laughs> all right, so let's build it on the fly. So all 19 players there. So we have the steel. We have the, the great. Uh, nah, great would be steel, I guess. Good, neutral. Uh, bad and negative. I think that's what I had. Negative value. So I actually don't like how the colors are. Let's make this. Let's make this vi vibrant purple. Good is green. Neutral. Yellow. Bad. Orange. Negative value is red. So here we go. Um, starting in just no particular order. I guess we're gonna go off the order that we have. Down here, the order makes it less fun. Let's save Bruce Brown for later. Let's save Boucher a little bit later. Starting off with Bruno Fernando. Bruno Fernando coming in on a training camp deal specifically. And I think that this is pretty close to a steal. I, I mean, the Bruno Fernando situation is great. Uh, I talked about it in a video on the main channel. And I said that... Look, Bruno Fernando's contract situation is if he makes the Raptors opening day roster, it's fully guaranteed for the year's contract. If he doesn't make the Raptors opening day roster, the Raptors are gar guaranteed him nothing uh, at, at, at that present point. He's getting paid throughout training camp. If we want to keep him, great. We keep him, we pay him. Makes sense to me. If we don't want to keep him, we don't owe him any money. My thought process that I said in the video was that I believe if Christian Coloco does come back and it's looking like he will come back ahead of the season and he, then he chooses the Raptors to sign for. That's what the Raptors are waiting for, and in that case, they'll cut Bruno Fernando. But for now, like, there's literally nothing wrong with this contract. Everything is great about the deal. Steel might be slightly a strong word, but it's nice to have him in that position. Next up is Brandon Carlson on a two-way contract. Yeah, an undrafted free agent. Not much to say there. 25-year-old rookie. He's a center who showed a bit more athleticism than I thought he had uh, in summer league, but he can space the floor. And I think that there's some potential utility for him uh, in the NBA this season for the Raptors, but it's a two-way deal. It's fine. You know, <laughs> not much else to say about it. For David Mitchell, he's still on his rookie scale contract. He's in the finer, final year, excuse me, of that rookie scale contract. So for him, I'm just going to confirm the exact amount right now. The one thing I don't like about it, so obviously the contract at this point from a value perspective, uh, a former ninth overall pick with the Sacramento Kings, it, it it's going to be cheap. Um, what is he, probably making $7 million this year. Yeah, it's cheap. It's good, but in terms of the contract situation, $6.5 million, we're in a, we're in a good spot. It, it's not great above that because... The Raptors have to pay him at the end of the season, and that's probably something that was in the minds of the Sacramento Kings when they traded him. They don't have to pay him now at the end of the season. The Raptors are on the hook for that. 
I don't think he commands a huge contract. I guess we'll see how he performs this season. But I think that he's on $6.5 million. That's a backup point guard. I think that's pretty good. I'll put him in the good tier. Next up, DJ Carton. Similar to Brandon Carlson on a two-way deal. Uh, I think this is neutral. Yeah. We're going to get a better look at DJ Carton. He showed flashes in like the one game he played for the Raptors last year. But this is all we got to go off of. So I'm uh, excited to see what he can potentially do for the Raptors in the upcoming season. Hopefully he's he's finally healthy, but I'm I'm yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing him in, in preseason to see if there is there's any potential there. And if there isn't, like we're fine. It's only a two-way deal, no problem whatsoever. Let's move into the next player that we have on the list, Garrett Temple. Uh, you know, I've had my reservations over the deal because it's taking up a roster spot, but it's not like we really need to use that roster spot on anybody else. We have two empty spots we're not using. It's fine. You know, Temple is here basically to be the veteran presence for the team. He seems to resonate really well with the younger players. They seem to like to have him here. So really no problem having him on. I think it's three and a half ish million dollars. We're all good there. Garrett Temple. I've I've come around a little bit on his presence on the team. Next up is Brady Dick. It's it's good. Uh, second year of his rookie contract. Nothing to be upset about at this point. He's making fine money. Only expecting improvements this season. I gotta be happy with that current situation. Manuel quickly is where we really have to start to you know discuss it here. So initially, it was reported that Emmanuel quickly was on a contract worth thirty five million dollars per year. I'm not sure I would go as far as to call that bad. In fact, I don't think I would go as far as to call that a bad contract, but definitely not a bad contract after the update was made where he's now making $32.5 million per year. That's his number, 32.5. I think that's fair for him given the market that was out there. I'm neutral on it. You know, I think good would have been less than $30 million, but this is fine. Yeah, it's what he's worth. I'm very, very happy that he's still a Raptor. He's still on the team. That figure, I can't go as far as to call it good, but he's a great player. It's great that we have him, but the value, yeah, it's it's fine. It's, it's, it's neutral. They paid him what he deserved, right? It's a fair contract. Maybe that's more of the better term here. Fair. Man, quickie, fair value. Chris Boucher is where we creep into... Uh, we got to be pretty close to negative value here. For, for the certain circumstance where the, where the Raptors don't use him, I don't think there's plans to really use him this year. And the problem is he's making $10.8 million. Like, that's a decent chunk. And the issue is, like, it, like, the Raptors have clearly seriously struggled to trade the contract. Like, have seriously, it, it's seriously a problem trading that contract. If it wasn't, they would have traded him by now. Because I think there's teams out there who could use him. But the fact that he has not been able to be used in a trade means that it's it, it's really a negative right now for the Raptors to have him. I, I agree that that's a little bit harsh, but he is right now a, a negative asset towards the team, partially because of Darko's non-use of him, which I'm not complaining about, to be honest. And just the value, it, it, it's just... It's not even that much, but it is hurting the team having that contract right now, as unfortunate and as harsh as that is towards Chris Boucher himself. Jakob Pertl, $20 million a year. It's fair. You know, for a starting caliber center in the NBA who is a great defender, protects the rim really well, can certainly do his job on offense, good screen setter. Plenty to like about Jakob Pertl's contract at its current figure. It's, it's actually $19.5 million. I think that's about as as fair as it gets for a player like him. Next up is Jamal Shedd. Got a guaranteed contract, which he was hunting for. And because he's a 45th pick, it's, it's maybe a little bit less than he would have gotten higher up in the draft. But it's fair. Uh, there's going to be a lot of fair here. It's it's not going to be a well-balanced tier list. That's fine. It's it's fair for Jamal Shedd, for what he is. He's making less than $2 million, I think, this season. I think it's, it's 1.8. Which, again, completely fair. Jacoby Walter... First round pick, got his first round pick contract. Another one. It's fair. Like, you're literally guaranteed a certain amount of money based on your draft position. That, that is the definition of a fair contract. Jamison Battle, 
coming off of uh, a decent summer league with the Raptors, got rewarded with an Exhibit 10 deal. If you don't know what Exhibit 10 contract is, in short, it's a bonus incentive for when you're cut from your summer training camp team, you get a bonus for signing with their G League affiliate. So essentially, it's a boosted G League contract, but you get to work with the NBA guys in the summer. Another one, that's basically right to itself. It's, it's a completely fair contract for him to be on. Same can be said for the 31st overall pick, Jonathan Bobo. Now we have a conversation. We have the Bruce Brown contract. Obviously, it's not fair. It's not good. It's, it's too much for what a, the player he is. Knew that when he signed it. But there's still an opportunity for the Raptors to trade him. And I think that they eventually will have a chance to trade him. Going through the potentials around Boucher, I don't think the Raptors can trade him. And I think he'll be here all year. I think that the Raptors can trade Bruce Brown, which is why I'm going to put him in the bad tier because I don't think it's an untradeable contract. And I think he provides value because he's a player that's going to be utilized, especially the start of the season for the Raptors. And I think they can get potentially a first round pick out of trading him. So Bruce Brown, I'm not going to go as bad as Boucher, but it's, it's definitely not fair for what the player is. Kelly Olenek is a curious one. He signed for more than I wanted him to sign for. If the Olympic performance was an indication, we're down here. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to keep him as a fair right now, making around $12, $13 million for two years. If he comes out the gates and looks as washed as he did in the Olympics, we got a problem. But I'm not ready to cross that bridge just yet. Abaji, now, people have been upset with Abaji heading into the season, and, and I'd say rightfully so. He had a rough summer league. He's a third-year player, former lottery pick. He had a rough summer league, but still time, only making $4.3 million, and as a team option at the end of the season, worth $6.3 million. It's, yeah, it's fine. There's, there's no problem. I, some of these buns, I, yeah, I, might have to agree, but the contract situation is no problem. Um, not crippling at all. We got a team option at the end of the season. I I'm not. I have no real complaints over the contract figure associated with him. Four million dollars is going to be fine. Six and a half next year would also be fine. I have to put him in the fair tier. Just getting confirmation here. Here is the R.J. Barrett contract situation, which has been maligned in the past. It's been criticized in the past. This is what it gives us. It's $25.7 million this year, 27.7 next year, 29.6 the year after that. When the Raptors acquired him, I would have comfortably put him in the bad tier. At this point, I'm ready to say it's fair. If he performs like he did last season with the Raptors, that's a good contract. I need to see those incredible levels of performance for a longer period of time. I know we had like a, a we still had a decent sample. I'll give you that. You know, there was some, there was quite a bit to like about RJ Barrett. But like I said, he showed up with a bad contract. He made it look way better, but I'm not prepared as of yet to take these numbers. I, I get it. 32 games played with these incredible levels of efficiency, incredible scoring output. I'm not quite there to say it's a good contract. If he does this to start the season, like he was at the Olympics performing like this, we're going to move that up into the good category, which I was not expecting to do at any point, but that's where we are. Uh, next up, Scotty Barnes. Not gonna, I, can't, I can't call it a steal, but it's like it, it's better than good. It, it, it's great. What's great is let's, – let's just put a steal. Let's do it. What's great about Scotty Barnes is that even though he's making the max and he's literally like it could not have been any worse for us because it was literally the maximum amount of money. Scotty Barnes, who we have a lot of faith in as a player to continue to grow and continue to develop, is under contract with the Raptors for six more years. The Raptors have control of where he plays basketball for at least six years. 
that is a major win in my book. Your future is sorted. He's completely committed to the Raptors. That's enough for me to say it's better than good. I'll put him into this steel category. It's more like great, <laughs> this category. But for a little bit of fun, we're going to call it steel. It's a steal, even though it's a max. That's how good our boy is at basketball. That's what I'm trying to say. Final contract, Ulrich Shamshe. Surprisingly, a second-round pick here signed on a two-way contract. That is not what you normally see out of a second-round player, but that's fine. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to potentially see him get some NBA minutes this season because I was really impressed in Summer League. So that's where we end up, Ulrich Shamshe. Goes into our fair category. So, yeah, a lot of fine contracts. Only two contracts on the team, which are not great. Both of them expire at the end of the year. So, contractually, Toronto in a pretty good situation right now. 